Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio. In our last video, we got our state machine up and running, and now it's going to be so much easier to add new states to our enemy and keep our code clean while we're doing it. In this next video, we're going to add a charge state that allows our enemy, after a short pause when he detects the player, to charge after him. It'll also give us the option to add some strategy, like making the enemy chase us right off a cliff. Let's get started. So let's start off by looking at our transitions. At the moment, we have the patrol state, which we transition out of if the player is detected or come back to if the player is not detected. This time we're going to add the charge state, where after a brief pause, if the player is still detected, we'll move there. And if the player is no longer detected, we'll resume our patrol state. All right, so let's start off by creating a new C -sharp script, which we'll call charge state. Like our other states, we can get rid of start and update. And this one also will not inherit from mono behavior, so instead we can put enemy base state. Now it's not going to like that at first, and that's just because we need to add a constructor. So we'll just pop over to patrol state, we can borrow that constructor, come back over and paste it in. Don't forget to change the name so that they match. Now with that done, we're just going to generate our override methods. So you can right click on the name of your script, go to quick actions, and we'll just generate overrides. For now, let's just put them all in there. If we don't use some, we can just delete them later. Now before we actually code this state, let's get our transition set up so that we can actually make our way to the state. If we take a look here at our diagram, you'll see that our charge state is activated from the player detected state, as long as the player is still detected after a set amount of time. So we need to do two things here. First of all, decide how long we want to stay in the detected state, and then actually make the transition. To make this happen, we're going to have to pop into our enemy script and just declare a couple of variables. First of all, we'll need a public float called state time, which will keep track of the time when we enter the new state. We can then pop down to the bottom here, and in our switch state method, make sure that each time we switch the state, we keep track of the time at which we changed that state. Now the other thing we're going to need is to decide how long we want to be in the player detected state. Let's go up top again. You may notice that a lot of stats are starting to stack up here. In our next video, we'll actually take a look at how to create a data file with a scriptable object so that we can get all of that data taken out of here and stored in a nice, clean, separate space. But for now, we'll just keep it here. So let's create another public float. And for now, we'll just call this player detected wait time. And let's just initialize that at one second or whatever amount of time you'd like to use. All right, with that done, we can now head to our player detected state. So at the moment in our logic update, I'm just going to separate this out here. We're always checking whether or not the player is there. And as long as the player is not there, it will switch. However, let's make our else statement. If the player is in fact there, we want to start counting down our detected time. So we're going to say if time.time .time is greater than or equal to our enemy dot state time plus enemy dot player detected wait time. And so if our wait time is over, we simply want to go enemy dot switch state. And we're going to switch to the enemy dot charge state, which we haven't actually created yet. So it won't like that. But that's essentially how our logic is going to go. We can now initialize that state. So let's go to enemy. Up at the top here, we're just going to make a public charge state, which we'll call charge state. Then down here in our awake function, we can initialize that. Charge state is equal to a new charge state. And we'll pass along this enemy script as well as let's call our animation charge. Now if we pop back into our enemy detected, oh, we just need to make that a lowercase. Excellent. All right, we should be ready to run a quick check now by just looking at our console. After one second, we should enter the charge state, which shows that that's working. Now we're ready to actually set up our charge. All right, so in the charge state, I'm going to have my enemy charge for a set amount of time. So I'll have him increase his speed, charge at the player for, say, two seconds, and then check to see if he can find the player again. So we'll go back to the player detected state, or if he can't find the player, back to a patrol state. So we're going to need to start by declaring some variables again. So let's head to our enemy script. And one more time at the top here, we're going to need to make a public float, and this will be charge time. We're also going to need to make a public float called charge speed. 
So right now we're going to head down to our physics update since we're dealing with movement. I'm just going to make an if statement. So if time.time .time is greater than or equal to our enemy dot state time plus our enemy dot charge time, then we know that the charge is over. And so we need to check if the player is actually still within range. If the player is still in range, we want to change states back to our player detected state, initiate another wait so we can charge again. However, if the player is no longer around, we want to go back to our patrol state. Now we just need to make it so that he can actually charge if he does see the player and the time has not run out. So let's actually encapsulate this here in some brackets and now we'll make our else. So this is if the timer is still going and his time has not yet run out. Now we're going to actually make a separate method for the charging. So let's make a void called charge. And so if our timer has not yet run out, we simply want to call charge. Now for charge, we just need to find out what direction we're going. And we could just grab our enemy's facing direction and charge in that direction as if he is detecting the player while facing left, then he obviously needs to charge left. However, I don't want to create a lot of if statements here. So if facing right, charge to the right, if facing left, left. And so we're going to just make a little change to our facing right variable. So at the moment, we're using this facing right boolean in order to track what direction the enemy's facing for things like rotating and movement. However, a true false value isn't super helpful in actually calculating the movement. So we're going to change this. We're actually going to make this into an integer. And so when we're facing right, we'll make it equal to 1. And when we're facing left, it'll be negative 1. And that way we can just, rather than doing a big if statement, if facing right, travel to the right, we can actually just multiply our movement by this number. And so if we're facing right, it'll be positive. If we're facing left, negative. And it'll just save us a bunch of if statements down the road. At this point, though, we're going to need to right click. And I'm just going to go to Find References so that we can make sure to make all of these make sense. So for example, in our enemy script here, this isn't going to make sense anymore. It's not if we're facing right. Instead, we'll say if facing right is equal to 1. And we'll need to do the same right here. And the other case will be in our patrol state. Again, if enemy facing right is equal to 1. Then for this last one, we just need a little change. We can't use the not enemy facing right as it's not a bool anymore. But instead, we'll just add a negative. So if it's positive, it'll turn a negative, and the opposite is also true. And now that we've got that set up, we can now get back to our charge state. Scroll down to the bottom here to our charge, and let's make him actually move. So we're going to go enemy.rigidbody.velocity is equal to, and here we're going to set a new vector for him. It'll be a vector 2. And so on the x, what we want to do is we want to take our enemy.chargespeed, and we're just going to multiply that by our enemy facing right. I'm just going to take a moment right now and I now that I think about it facing right doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's call this facing direction. Um, just to change it in all instances you highlight it, hit command R, I believe it's control R if you're on PC, and then type and you can change it for all of them. So if I were to go to enemy right now you'll notice that it's changed to facing direction. All right so we'll multiply our charge speed by our facing direction for our x and for the y we just don't want to affect did it all. So we'll go enemy dot rb dot velocity dot y. So let's give this a try. Now back in Unity you can see that I forgot to initialize our charge time and speed so I'm just going to give him a two second charge time and because his current speed is two let's make his charge speed twice as fast. All right so now when he detects us he goes into player detect charges after a second and then starts to search again after two seconds. If he can't find us, he goes back into patrol. We can trick him into chasing us off a cliff if we like, and there's a little bit of a glitch where he uh, falls into some trouble there, detects the ledge on both sides, and spins around like a maniac. We'll fix that a little later. That said, things are more or less working the way we want them to here. In the next video, we're gonna separate some of those stats out into a scriptable object to just make things better organized, and then we're gonna add some damage. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.